it's also mentioned in the hadith of Ibn Majah, volume 2, page number 7 to 3. It says that the best income a person can earn is through his labor. So Islam encourages the person to enjoy the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to work for his living and to refrain from begging. The second objective is universal brotherhood and justice. The best words that I can quote to you from the Quran regarding universal brotherhood is from Surah Al-Hujurat, chapter number 49. Verse number 13 which says that O oh humankind, we have created you from a single pair of a male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you shall recognize each other, not that you shall despise each other. And the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who is the most righteous is the person who is the most pious. From this verse you come to know the criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not sex, it is not wealth, it is not caste, it is not color, but it is taqwa. It is God consciousness. It is piety. Further we also come to know that during the speech of the farewell pilgrimage of Hajjatul Vida, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, he said that no Arab is superior to a non Arab, neither a white is superior to a black, except in righteousness, except in piety, except in God consciousness. The best words that I can quote from the Quran regarding justice is from Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 135, which says that, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu, O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it be against yourself against your parents, against your relatives, or the rich or poor, for Allah protects all. Means if you have to stand for truth, if you have to stand for haq, if you have to give a witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can even go against yourself. You have to sacrifice your own interest. You can even go against your parents, against the relatives, or irrespective of the person we are going against is rich or poor. You have to stand firmly for justice as witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third objective is equitable distribution of the income, of the wealth. Islam is against the philosophy that the wealth should be concentrated in the hands of few individuals. And the difference between the rich and the poor should be reduced. Otherwise, they will be enemies unto each other. For this, Islam has devised a system called a zakat. That every Muslim who has a saving, who has a wealth of more than the nisab level, more than the minimum wealth required. He has to pay 2.5 percent, one fortieth of that wealth every lunar year to the poor people. And the categories to whom zakat can be given has been clearly listed in the Quran in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 60, which says that zakat can be given Zakat can be given to a fuqara, to a person who is poor. It can be given to a masakin, a person who is needy. It can be given to amilun, a person who is engaged in collecting and distributing the zakat. It can be given to muallah fatukulub, those whose hearts, those whose hearts are inclined towards Islam, 
that is the converts or the reverts. It can be given to the rikab, that is the captives. It can be given to the garimun, that is the one who has taken loan. It can be given to the debtor. The seventh category is Ibn Sabil, that is the wayfarer, the traveler. Even though he is rich, if he gets stranded in a foreign land and if he does not have money to go back or for his sustenance, you can give him out of the zakat money. And the last category is Tisabilillah, in the way of Allah. And this last category is further subdivided. In this category of Tisabilillah, it can be given to a person who is giving religious education, person who is acquiring religious education, the person who is involved in doing jihad in the way of Allah, striving, struggling, doing holy war in the way of Allah. It can be given to a da'i. It can be also given to a person who is obtaining the secular education. The several categories. This system of zakat has been specified. The reason which is given in the Quran in Surah Al-Hashar, chapter number 59, verse number 7, to prevent the wealth from circulating amongst the wealthy and rich. The zakat has been devised to prevent the wealth from circulating amongst the rich and the wealthy. If every individual in this world practices the system of zakat, there will not be a single human being who will die of hunger in this world. Unfortunately, even the Muslims don't give the correct zakat that is due to them. They may give part of it, only a small percentage. If every Muslim in this world gives zakat correctly, there will not be a single Muslim below the poverty line. Islam teaches that to find lawful employment to the person who is unemployed and to give him a good remuneration for the work he does. The Quran also says that after a person dies, his wealth should be divided according to the guidelines laid in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 11, 12 and verse number 176. It should not go to one or two individuals of the society, how it is done today, that whatever wealth is remaining of a person who dies, it goes to one or two individuals. But the Quran specifies the wealth should be distributed according to the guidelines laid in the Quran. The fourth objective is individual freedom within the context of the social welfare. <coughs> According to Islam, a man is born free. No one, not even the state, can abrogate his freedom, nor subject his life to strict regimentation. 